All right, we're looking at example eight in the curve sketching notes, and we're going to take a look at our um, continuity, as always, in our domain. Now, we have a fraction, and you'd be tempted to be like, hey, there must be a domain restriction, but remember, it's only a domain restriction if the denominator equals zero, and this denominator uh, never equals zero because you have an even power plus two, so there are no discontinuities on this. Uh, this is the quotient. Um, of two continuous functions, so f is continuous because it's the quotient of two continuous functions. Uh, the bottom is continuous because it's the composition of two continuous functions. So we have a nice combination going. Our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Uh, when I'm finding my derivative, I probably do want to rewrite my f of x as x over x to the fourth plus two to the one third, and we are going to use the quotient rule in order to find the derivative. Um, while I'm thinking of it, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to think about my x-intercepts, and x equal to zero is going to be an x-intercept. That's a fairly easy uh, fact to look at. If you look at your dominating your survival the fastest, uh, let's do the limit, as x goes to infinity, um, I can just look at the x over x to the four-thirds, which is going to be um, our, end up simplifying to one over x to the one-third, which is going to go to zero, and that's going to be true for plus or minus infinity. So we are going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to zero on our graph. We take a look at that. So we do everything we can pre-calculus-wise, and now we're going to go ahead and do our calculus. So I'm going to find my first derivative. So I'm going to do my low d high minus my high d low, so times my one-third x to the fourth plus two to the negative two-thirds times derivative of the inside, four x cubed, chain rule, all over the bottom squared, so x to the fourth plus two to the two thirds. We are going to need to simplify. Uh, this one ends up being just a big simplifying problem. Um, I would say that you know you want to be careful. There might be some unusual steepness or a cusp alert here, but as you can see here in my derivative, this bottom is not going to be undefined either, so we don't have any problems with that. Let's go ahead and factor out our x to the fourth plus 2 to the negative 2 thirds. Remember, we want to pull it out to the smallest power. 1 third minus negative 2 thirds will be x to the fourth plus 2. And then over here, we're going to have left uh, 4 thirds x to the fourth. And again, that's all over x to the fourth plus 2 to the 2 thirds. Let's go ahead and simplify that down. Uh, this Combine these together. You'll see that this starts to kind of, when you start doing enough of these, you'll start to see some patterns. And then over here, we're going to have 3 minus 4 thirds. So that's going to end up being 1 third negative 1 third x to the fourth plus 2. All right. So our critical values are when the derivative is equal to 0. The bottom is never 0, so I don't have to worry about it. The top is going to be... Um, x equals plus or minus the fourth root of 6. I'll leave you to verify, set your denom or numerator equal to 0 and solve. We're going to do our sign chart. So negative fourth root of 6, positive fourth root of 6, 0, and 0. Check uh, values, like in between obviously would be 0, would be a good check. Uh, 0 would be a positive over a positive. If I pick something like 100, that's going to be negative on the top. The bottom's going to be, the bottom's always going to be positive, so I can start ignoring it. So if I put in like 100, that's going to end up being a negative number. And then if I put in like negative 100, it's still going to be a negative number. So f is going to be decreasing, increasing, and then decreasing. So we have a relative min at um, x equal to the negative fourth root of 6 because f prime switched minus 2 plus, and you have a relative max 
at x equal to fourth root of six because f prime switched plus two minus. So we've got that taken care of. And again, we'll, we'll let Desmos find the actual values, but if I need the coordinates, I would plug it back into the original and get that, okay? And if I was on a non-calculator section, I would plug it back in and I wouldn't simplify it. I would just walk away from what that is. So we plug those values in. All right, so now we're ready. Let's find the second derivative. And I am going to use this version because it's nice and simplified to come in for my second derivative using quotient rule again. So low d high, which is going to be times negative 4 thirds x cubed minus my high, negative 1 third x to the fourth plus 2 times the derivative of the bottom, 4 thirds x to the fourth plus 2 to the 1 third times 4 x cubed. Don't forget your chain rule. All right, and that's all over. If you get tired of this, don't forget your denominator, x to the fourth plus 2 squared. So that's going to be to the 8 thirds. Um, again, not going to worry about that denominator because it's not going to affect anything, but we do want to factor the top. Let's pull out to the one third and um, a minus and the 4x cubed. So minus 4x cubed and the x to the fourth plus 2 to the one third. Okay, Let's see what we have left. 4 thirds minus 1 third is 3 thirds, so you would have x to the 4th plus 2. We took away the negative of the 4 and the x cubed, so you're still going to have a 1 third with that. I took this negative, I took this, and I took the x cubed, and I took the 4. So what do we have left? 4 thirds and that factor, so plus 4 thirds and this negative one-third x to the fourth plus two, all over x to the fourth plus two to the eight-thirds. So a lot of this ends up just being um, the simplifying part is, is the tough part when you're looking at it. Um, I spent more time doing that than I have anything else. Let's combine these two together. So we would have minus four x cubed all this, add the one-third, uh, remember you're subtracting, so that would be negative 7 over 3, which ends up being 7 thirds on the bottom. Okay, and then I need to simplify in here, so let's see, I have one-third x to the fourth minus four-ninths, let's see, one-third x to the fourth minus four-ninths x to the fourth, so that would be three ninths minus, so negative one-ninth x to the fourth. And then we have our plus two-thirds. And then over here we would have plus eight-thirds, which is ten-thirds, so plus ten-thirds. Okay, so now taking a look at this, we want to find our possible POIs. Set our derivative equal to zero, so this is going to be at x equal to zero from this factor. And then um, also from this factor, uh, let's not do it quite as much in my head, uh, negative 10 thirds, so x to the fourth equals, uh, multiply by negative 9 to get rid of that, which is going to give me 30, so x equals plus or minus the fourth root of 30. All right, so we can check our sign chart for our second derivative. So we have the negative fourth root of 30, 0, and the fourth root of 30, which, you know, if you think about the fifth root of 32 is 2, so this is not that big. So it should be fairly easy to test some values um, so if I pick something like negative 10, I should be okay. That would be positive. This is always going to be positive, so I can ignore that. Negative 10, that's positive, but negative, and that's going to be fairly large. So this is going to end up being negative 
negative, negative, three negatives mean overall negative. Okay. And then check over here if I pick like 10, positive, negative. Um, this is going to be negative. So you're going to end up being just double checking my. Yeah, that would be positive over there. And then it does switch. It's going to be plus and minus. And you could pick values like I, you know, would do something like one, um, plugging in a one, and then you could see that that's negative. And then plugging in a negative one right there, you could you could figure that out fairly easily. So F is concave down, then up, then down, and then up. And we have points of inflection at x equal to 0 and x equal to plus or minus the fourth root of 30 because the second derivative switched signs. All right? And then from that point, we have enough information to go ahead and sketch it. We know where we're concave, concave up and down. We know where we have our maxes and mins. And I did the x-intercepts. So, you know, this is one of those long problems, my x, one x-intercept, and I did my end behavior. So let's go ahead and go to the um, curve sketching graph. Let me switch to that. All right, now, so there's a lot of stuff here. Here's my function. Uh, this was your, um, one of your extrema. Here was your other extrema. So there was my max and my min. Here was a point of inflection. Here's the other point of inflection, I add that in. And then your other point of inflection, so we add that in. So it's like we're going to connect the dots, we can start to see the shape. And then we had a horizontal asymptote, so I add that in. And then we think about our concavity, it was, you know, just reminding you, we were down, which kind of makes sense because we're approaching that asymptote. And then we were up until I got to this point of inflection, and then I was down all the way over to that point of inflection, hit that max, and then I was up again. So you're kind of looking at that kind of shape uh, when we take a look at our graph. So again, the moral is find all your information, plot your points, and then pay attention to your concavity, look at your end behavior, find your x-intercepts if you can, and then go ahead and sketch and connect the dots following your behavior. All right, so that will end up example eight.